Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. Uh, we got one of your favorites, your childhood favorites in the house today. We got Mr. Jaleel White. How are you, Jaleel? It's been a while, man. What's up, dude? <laughs> no, we got our mutual friend, Bert Marcus. Yes. Uh, he's an amazing documentarian. How to Make Money Selling Drugs. Check out his doc. Yes. Well, <laughs> how, how to Make Money Selling Drugs was his. Um, that Instagram doc was also his. Um, yeah, that was dope. Which was, was really which was amazing as well. I did a feature film for him uh, in 2008. And he was one of those young hustling dudes that you meet in Hollywood that you can tell is, is going places where you're like, ah, shit. He'll figure it out and, uh, and make it work. The only other one I met like him along the way was a, a guy named Jason Blum, who uh, obviously owns Blum, oh, yeah. Blumhouse. I did a movie, I think his first movie for him back in the day. And now he's going on to do nine thousand horror films that are Heck, worth billions guys must. of dollars and uh and bert put us together and uh you had written a script you're, you're a very talented writer and Thank uh you, and we had met about it and uh you know uh one of the first things he said was hey man you know I, he's not just urkel from family matters like he's an awesome dude and like uh when i walked into the bar it's a true story it seems weird that you would even have to like of course he's not that character doesn't exist in real life. But people you know in I mean? real life people treat are dumb you as like shit. that. People are dumb as shit. Yeah. So like I walked into the bar <laughs> I, and I see this good looking dude sitting at the bar and I'm like, I did double take and I was like, oh shit. Yeah, I think that's Jaleel White, right? Like, yeah, he didn't know. He was actually trying to pick you up. He didn't know you were the guy he was supposed to meet for the first half hour of the interview. I exactly. Yeah, he and I like, was like, holy yeah. shit. Like that, that dude's, a, he's got to be a poon slayer. <laughs> um, so it has to be. Are you married now? <laughs> Everybody's got to calm down. Everybody's got to calm down. Everybody's got to calm down. Are you married I'm LA, now? I'm, a, I'm L.A. born and raised, man. You know, I'm proud of that. You know, when you grew up in L.A. the way I have, you get a chance to see a lot of walks of life, mm. a lot of different people come and go. Uh, people like myself and our buddy Bert that we're mentioning here, you know, yep. we're, we're this is our home. You know, we've been here for all our lives, 30, 40 years, you know what I'm saying? So you just, sometimes, sometimes people have big wide-eyed dreams of LA and we like, uh-oh, we know, we know where that's headed. Mm. We know where yeah. that's headed. Yeah, every single time. Yeah, you're going to end up working at a restaurant until you're 45 years old. Exactly. Basically. Living in a one-bedroom yeah. in Van Nuys With trying five to figure it out. roommates. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and right before the show, we were talking about it because, uh, you know, we, we have another mutual fund, Christine Lakin, who starred on yeah. Step by Step. Um, and, uh, she's one of my best friends in real life. She's been on the show numerous times. Uh, and then Ross Patterson revolution as well. And she would always talk about the transition from being a child star to growing up and then continuing your career in the industry. And yeah, she went through it. She went through it. Yeah. I, I, and I, I would have to imagine it's the same way. She had a really good attitude about it where she was just like, you know what, man, I was amped about it and she came out of it normal. Uh, so did you, um, I, I think at least, but, um, uh, but it's hard for a lot of people. I'm right? only wearing a hoodie because I'm having a bad hair day. That's it. I'm not, <laughs> this is not a cool guy thing. It's really, it's just, it's, it's very slavey under here right now. And I don't feel like combing my hair. <laughs> did you say slavey? Slavey. I like slavey. that. I've never very, heard that phrase it's, before. It's That's very, good. it's very Django-ish my hair right now. It's very Django-ish. They weren't, they didn't. They didn't hand out too many brushes and combs on the plantations back then, bro. <laughs> no, and, no, I wouldn't and, imagine. Yeah, it seemed like that was a bad deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a being completely a, effing a, bad a, deal that we tried being, to yeah. resurrect with this election, and thank God it just got shut down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, we have a lot of listeners that go both ways on that. Um, <laughs> with the election. Uh, with the, they're only going to go to one way today. They're going to take that L, and they're going to hold it. Gonna hold I, we'll, it. <laughs> we'll see. There could be a recount. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? They can recount these, baby. They can take it away from them states they want. <laughs> well, we can get into politics if you want. Civility is making a comeback. Well, Civility. Uh, let, me, let, let me ask you this. This is a serious question because we don't have a lot of people from uh, that are lifelong LA residents, right? Yeah. And LA, oh. LA sucks right now, and it's mostly because of uh, the leadership there and that leadership. Oh yeah. They're all yeah. they're all kind of on one side of the political aisle. So I wonder, from your perspective, what the fuck is happening in Los <laughs> Angeles? 
Like, did, like, yeah. Do you, do you think that when you drive the streets? Because I, I lived there for 18 years, and like, dude, I when I was there, I loved LA. Like, I'm not one of those people yeah. who shit on LA. And I was like, man, I loved it. And there was a there was a good 10 to 12 year stretch where it was really clean and nice, and mm. the transportation oh, system LA, was great. LA from like 90 to like 2002. It's like shit. Mm, yeah, I, pro, 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 right? probably, it was, probably like basically 90, it was like when, when USC got popped with all of its football allegations. That's when it started going down. <laughs> yeah, right? Reggie, yeah. Reggie Bush and all his bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come right. on, dude. <laughs> uh, Reggie Bush and all his bullshit. But uh, more, yeah, right. More oh, importantly, that, like, dude, we hadn't been there in a while, and like the homelessness has gotten so crazy. Oh my gosh, it's 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 terrible, man. Every freeway underpass. Mm. I mean, even the Veterans Memorial, they were the, the tents were lined up outside of it over in uh, the Westwood area. And now they just opened the damn thing up and just said, here, come on in. And now mm. it's just turned into this whole park situation. It's, it's really, 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 really sad. And, and what's what's really bad about L.A. is that we've become comfortable driving past tragedy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what's yeah, really un unfortunate. It, it it's is. Like you, it's it's weird. I mean, it, you, you you feel me on that? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Where it's you, like people are just getting too comfortable just driving past and ignoring tragedy. Right. Yeah, right it's, next to it. It's not great, but I mean, look, that's that's just kind of the way it happens here in America. We uh, we want iPhone i uh, iPhones and hot pockets. Yep. And if we got those things, we usually ignore everybody else's problems. There you go. Typically, there you, there, there you go. It's there, and, there you and that is that is ubiquitous. Throughout the political landscape. Oh, oh, that was, you know that I mean? was hold on, was that was a huge word? Buddy. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. Look that one up. There you go. <laughs> oh, let's, Starts uh, with a let's U. Let's go ahead and uh, you and then ubiquitous. For our listeners. Ubiquitous after that. So, um, <laughs> it's I pervasive. Make sure I get the uh, definition right. Yep. Uh, there it is. Uh, no, but I, I felt like I felt like this found uh, everywhere. There you go. Um, <laughs> there you go. Appearing or present everywhere. There you go. Okay. <laughs> No, but I felt, I felt like this, like after COVID, man, I, I felt like the homelessness took over because uh, now it's creeping up into Hollywood. I don't know where you live at. Are you in the, are you in Hollywood? I'm a West or, oh, you're in West Side. Okay, cool. Because um, in Hollywood, you know, Dan and I were just shooting there uh, mm. in July. And um, I mean, it's, it's crept up all the way in the hills. Like it's. Yeah, that's bad. It's it, really, really bad. Well, I mean, yeah. it's even the hills is one thing, right? But when you see like camps on Vine, mm -hmm. like all and the it, way up like vine, yeah. all the way up vine that's i never thought i would see something like that i didn't you know either. what i mean that's like going to the chelsea piers in new york and seeing homeless people everywhere or something like th those areas are typically blocked up but i guess there's no real tourism happening right now so what, what, what would the impetus be to keep that clean half of those fucking yeah. businesses are closed right now yeah you know yeah. what i mean and, and somebody asked me this i was on somebody else's podcast last week and they asked me they were like um what was it like growing up in atlanta because I'm, I'm from atlanta originally and i was like you know it's weird the Atlanta changed as a city when the Olympics came in in 96, right? Because I was a kid growing up there, and they had cleaned up the entire city, transportation, all that stuff, because they were worried about the world coming in and thinking that America, and, and Atlanta in particular, was a shithole to live in. Um, my best guess for L.A. is that it won't get cleaned up entirely until the Olympics come in, uh, in 2028. Um, what do you think about that? Is it 2024 or 2028? Shit, is it, is it four? Is it only four years away? This year has lasted so long. I think it's it, 2028. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, 2028. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so okay. it, it's got about it's got about seven or eight years, and they'll look. Everybody will wait to the last minute on that. Uh, what are your thoughts as a as a lifelong a Angelino there? I mean, look, I don't think this is a, a necessarily a political issue at all, um, because a lot of the politics associated with the governance in LA are not even consistent. I mean, technically, we're probably the most conservative behaving place in all of COVID, um, like in the country. You know, we, we're not, we, our kids aren't back in school. Our, our sports leagues are shut down. Mm. Um, I'm talking about like just local, like my daughter and stuff like that. You know, the, 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 the COVID measures for, for protection are, are higher than any place else, any place else. Um, and um, well, except for any, except for when any people of crap has to do with whether or not you're freaking Republican or Democrat. No, of course uh, not. Well, I mean, it, just, it, it, we have some I, we have some just uh, freaking libtard paranoia out here, to be quite honest. What do you mean by that? Just I don't I don't know. But just I, it, it's I think we all know how to protect ourselves. You know, at this point, you know, um, when I'm in public, I wear a mask, mm. especially if I'm indoors. It's, I, I pretty much do it as a courtesy to everybody else. Right. 
Um, and, and but if I'm at a if I'm at a house where we all feel comfortable, mm-hmm. then you know we just limit our touching, and and it's, and it's gonna be what it's gonna be. Right. So no you know? no orgies from Jaleel White is what he's saying. Uh, yeah. No. No. We not we not we not knocking them off two at a time right now. We not, <laughs> we gonna be, I'm, I'm I'm into some I'm into some heavy one one on one action right now with one particular person. Well, that's uh, good. You know, you know, COVID boo is important. You got to have COVID boo. Yes. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I got a good COVID boo right now. I'm it's, like co- COVID. it's like cuffing season. It's like cuffing yeah. season, yeah. Uh, Same but it's deeper because it's like, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's true. Uh, let me, let I me... feel like the conversation just started now. Everything else we said before, just get rid, just dump that crap. Yeah, just this dump, is now the it. conversation got started. We talk about COVID boo. Dump it, yeah. Uh, let me ask you this, like uh, acting wise. Um, most of production is is shut down and, and everything else. Um, are you worried about any of that uh, as far as like, you know, the roles coming back or or just movie theaters in general coming back? Man, the loss of movie theaters has been huge, mm. huge. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's just, about it's the same as that, the loss of DVDs back in the day, right? That was a big revenue dump for a lot of people that oh, were yeah. in the industry. Oh, oh, my gosh. Yeah. But I've been fortunate to act about three or four times since uh, since July. Uh, I, I filmed in Philadelphia. I filmed in Georgia. Um, I filmed locally here. So um, I, they've been sending COVID people to my house, you know, shoving the Q-tip up my nose since July. And uh, the only difference is when you're on set acting now is you just have these people in flag jackets that are always reminding you of social distancing. And um, they literally let make you wear your mask during rehearsal and you only take it off between action and cut, which I think is absolutely silly. But again, you just you have to abide. Right. Well, I mean, it's for it's for insurance, right? That yeah. it's getting yeah. a getting a yeah. film insured in the fucking first place is a pain in the ass. Right. Um, and getting it insured these days has got to be way worse. Yeah, because I, mean, I, 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 I I had a show that was supposed to shoot in the summer uh, in July, and they could not figure out a way around you know the the COVID procedures, and uh, right. and it got pushed. Um, and they were looking to shoot next March, and I mm. was like, no, I like you know that's too long. Um. But you know, going forward, I, look, Regal is uh, is shut down their cinemas. Um, movies. Uh, not only are you not able to go to theaters currently in, in Los Angeles and New York and the big places that, that traditionally bring in that type of money for a box office, but they don't have any product to put in the movies, even if the theaters were open, because every studio is holding it back. Yeah. Is this the end of movie theaters? Man, I don't even want to answer that. Man, that's such a scary thought. Mm. I think. Um, you know, I had already begun upgrading myself to the, uh, you know, my daughter, when she go to the movie, she's like, daddy, are we going to the ones where the seats go all the way back? Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So I feel like the higher end movie theaters will be the first to return because they're already naturally a lot more distanced. Um, but as far as, every, you know, a theater situation where people are, are, are sharing an arm bar, um, you know, it, um, almost like in, in a Broadway situation, though, a traditional theater, I don't know. Like, I, I don't, I don't, it's all about insurance. Yeah. The funniest part about it, the, the, not even funny, the, the, the saddest really part about the whole COVID stuff is it's more about insurance than it is about anybody actually caring somebody catches it. Yeah. 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 No, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a very, it's a cover your ass type situation that everybody's yeah. on right now. And I, I understand it, I guess, in some ways from some of the local and statewide leadership in a lot of these states that have shut down, but Man, we got to get our shit together. Uh, it's, it, it's not. It, you're right when you say it's not necessarily a political issue, but it's certainly been made one. You know what I mean? I. Oh yeah, it, but that's but like I said. I don't. I listen. I don't really care who anybody voted for. I feel sad if you don't feel a responsibility to denounce racism. I definitely feel sad about that. Well, who, I think who's it, who's I think not it. who's not denounced racism? What are you talking about there? Well, you know damn well what I'm talking about there. Mr. Cheeto refuses to denounce racism and well, white I mean, supremacy. Come on, dude. There, there's literally uh, after that, that was a thing for a week. And then somebody put out a video of him 25 it's times. For, it's not a thing for nothing, man. It's, it's real simple. I mean, I'm dead serious, dog. You're not going to let somebody drive a car through Charlottesville and just be like, well, those were, you know, very fine people on both sides. Fuck that. Well, like, did, come you, on, did you did you watch the entire video? Because right afterwards, he did. Yeah, he, I watched like, the entire video. OK, because like 10 seconds after what you just quoted, he said that all these white supremacists can get fucked, basically. So in the same video that you're referencing, I, I haven't seen that. that quote. I would, I would, lo- I would love to see that quote. Yeah, sure. I, 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 I mean, it's, it's yeah, you yeah. can look it up on YouTube. I, I think that's one of those things that's been uh, leveraged to to polarize something that wasn't necessarily a good idea to polarize. Like, like any any time anybody's trying to intentionally divide people, that's not a good thing. 
Exactly. Not a, not a that's big fan like, of that. Be yeah, in uh, yeah, and, and on both sides. Like, I, I just think there's issues and everything on both sides that yeah. everybody was using for the election and, and all that stuff. But uh, I mean, if you're the president, you got to be more careful about how, what you say and how you say things. But there is literally there's. Hey, do, do, do you really feel like my man exercised civility in his speeches to the country? Yeah. Uh, so I, I, mm, me personally, really. like, because I'll be honest with you, like, uh, I'm like I, I'm a Trump guy, right? Um, I like his policies. Um, I did not like the way he's not an eloquent speaker like Obama. Mm. Obviously, um, I don't like the way he used Twitter. He's not very um, thoughtful either. It's it's like you're being president. Those are important. You know, those are all important character issue things you guys are bringing. Yeah, up. for sure. I mean, and but look on the other side of that issue, you can say that uh, that uh, Biden is more polished and he's nicer when he speaks. But he's the one that wrote the goddamn crime bill to put three and a half black men in prison. Right. So. I mean that that's that's not i mean once i mean once again i look I'm, I'm I, like words even, versus even, actions is what i'm, I'm not really even going to pick i'm not even going to pick sides from that standpoint but i'm going to use analogies that could possibly be funny for people actually listening to us but it's like, <laughs> like saying you got a you got a great you got a great school principal who's you know we love all of his policies but every morning he thinks it's okay to greet the kids uh, how are you kids fucking doing this morning okay it's like it, 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 it that that's a breaking point. I'm sorry. I don't care how good of a principal he is. Mm -hmm. He can't stand at the flag every morning and say, how are you kids fucking doing every morning? No, for it's sure. And if, uh, to, to be honest, if, he, if, he, if he measured the things he said more, uh, we wouldn't be having this conversation because he would have exactly. been, yeah. been, yeah. been reelected. It's true. Right? Yeah. Look, it's, it's true. It's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, so what we're talking but, I mean, about is, is we're not even, and I love that. You know, I hope your viewers get that and your listeners get that from me. I'm like, this is not a political issue. This became a character issue. Mm, that's true, you but I mean, what? You what cannot, we cannot have leadership in this country that stokes the flames of hate. We can't do it. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if I necessarily agree that he stokes the flame. He is careless, and maybe there's that. Man, that happens. we playing word games, Dad. Come on, bro. Careless, no, stoking no. the flames. We play. We getting into some real semantic territory. Well, the word the word games are necessary because they're trying to flesh out exactly what's happening here. And the reason I say that is because. You operate under this premise that he doesn't denounce racism. There's a video that I'm looking at right now, 25 instances over the last 20 years where he literally said what you're asking him to say, like over and over and over again. Now, sure, he's careless with the way he speaks. There's no question about that. Right. I call him an idiot all the time, and I'm not a fan of yeah, him. Because Dan's, Dan's not a Trump guy, by the way. No, uh, I'm not, he not at all. Like, he's not a Trump guy at all. So. No, but we have to be honest about what's actually happening here. You're talking about stoking the flames. People, the media and, and liberal politicians constantly referring to this guy as a racist and making him have to defend himself, despite the fact that most of his policies have been very beneficial to black America, right? Yeah. Economically, the First Step Act, all this other stuff. Uh, uh, Lowest unemployment rate. Yeah, I mean, there, a lot stuff. of stuff. I, I, I personally, just from being in the military, I guess, maybe I'm, I'm jaded. Not jaded, but I'm used to be people being dicks. So that part doesn't bother me. But I, I do understand why it bothers other people. And it's really stupid, too. Like, if you've got the right answers, and it seems like he had a lot of them because the policies worked, but you lose because you can't keep your fucking mouth shut, yeah. That's that's a bad look. Yeah, it doesn't that's matter. Every guy in every relationship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I mean that's really fucking. Stupid. Seriously, dog. I mean, look, you could be. Listen, you could be the most well-intentioned guy mm. with a relationship with a woman. Well-intentioned. If your tone is off, you're losing her. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So that's. I mean, all these Republicans are pissed off right now. I'm sure a lot of them think there's voter fraud issues and blah blah. blah. Maybe there is. Who knows? Maybe we'll find out. Maybe we won't. But we, we. As Americans have no one to blame but Trump for losing that election. If you wanted him to win, you don't have to blame Democrats. You don't have to blame the media. You just blame yourself, blame him yeah. for not holding his feet to the fire and him not fucking keeping his mouth shut. That's what really happened. I mean, honestly, if you like Republicans took way more seats in the House than they were expected to, they're holding on to the Senate. And everything else worked out for Republicans except for him. Yeah. So that's a symptom, probably. I mean, look, there may be some fraud here and there, but th that's a symptom of him being a cunt. Yeah. To and, be I, honest. And, and I think I think that's why you, you've seen like we haven't seen him in the last few days. And that's very rare. Obviously, he's been playing so, golf. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it is one of those things where, yeah, I, I think um, if he was a more eloquent speaker and everything else, he probably would have gotten reelected. But I don't uh, think it's about eloquent, man. It's just about basic fucking civility mm. it's that, it, that i don't even want to talk about policies come on you guys we, we're too cool we're all the three of us we're too cool for that <laughs> let the other people debate that stuff who actually have more knowledge of the individual policies I, as a father who sits on a couch next to an 11 year old girl mm. 
And she says to me, Daddy, why does he keep cutting her off? Why, why won't he let her speak? Why is he so rude? Why is he so this? This is an 11 year old's observations. I'm like, I just want to deal with it at the character level. And then everybody else who thinks they're an expert about policies and where things are going to go and voting, you guys go argue that stuff. You know, mm -hmm. there's always going to be some policy out there, to be quite honest, uh, you know, that affects our lives that, um, that we're not going to be in favor of. Mm -hmm. You know, Dave Chappelle's got the funniest joke in the world about money, where he was just like, you know, he was so excited Obama got in office, but he was like, damn, I just made my money and now you're taking it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, you yeah, know, well, so you're not going to get anybody that's more authentically black than Dave Chappelle. Yeah, and he admits great. that he's like, crap, I paid all this freaking money because Obama. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's coming again. You're, you're in L.A. Your uh, marginal tax rate is about to go up to about 60 percent, 58 percent. I know. Everybody keeps talking about this thing and we, you know, we'll deal with it when we get there. I don't. I don't want to deal in hypotheticals. I'm, I'm de my, my therapist is telling me stop dealing in hypotheticals. <laughs> deal, with, deal, with, deal, with, deal with what is 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 the reality for you today. See, my therapist keeps giving me uh, hallucinogens, which I think is the opposite. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I got another therapist too, and he just gives me really, really good pre rolls. But oh, that's, nice. a, that's a different therapist. Have you, now, you're, now you're speaking our producer's language. That's well, all you're speaking my language because I smoke yeah. all goddamn day. But uh, yeah. Oh, shoot. Well, yeah, well, we've been talking about all the wrong stuff, man. Yeah. I can't erase everything we just said. And now let's start the podcast. Right Why now. does he keep trying to start the show over? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, no, we have you tried any of the uh, ketamine clinics out there? They're all over the place now. Yeah. Have no, you, I haven't. Have you experimented in any of that? No, nah, man, I'm, I'm pretty much straight cannabis. I don't uh, I don't like I don't like doing too much other other than that. Uh, but I like a high quality. I like a high grade. You know what I'm saying? Like a good wedding cake, a good. Uh, I actually have some know, wedding maybe, cake at home. Yeah, maybe good. some biscotti or motor bread. I like I'm a flavor chaser. Mm. Ah. Yeah, there's wedding cake is a good one. Actually, a lot of those flavors, uh, they just don't taste like anything really. Right. Uh, yeah, but it's a good sell. Like Gary, when you walk in. Nobody makes a good purple Urkel. I'm I'm annoyed by that. Nobody <laughs> makes a good purple Urkel. Is that uh, is that your Ben and uh, Jerry's ice cream flavor? Do they ever make that? What happened? Yeah, did they? No, make, did they, 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 they never did. That's uh, it's a strain that everybody knows. Purple Urkel out everybody. there. Everybody, nobody's made a good one. No, no, not and you always see it, but they, yeah, you're right. They've never made a good strain of it. Um, yeah. the reason why he was asking you about uh, the, the tax rate and everything is is everybody's leaving LA yeah. there's a mass exodus to, yeah. to where we are actually in Austin Texas um it seems like everybody's going to Austin or Nashville for some reason I like Austin I'm gonna have to come out there and go drink with you guys yeah I dude like let's do it it's a blast it's fun uh, it's, it's a great no, I've been town there. It's, it's lawlessness what you guys got going on the people just pass out on the streets and the guys on horses just trot by it's an amazing thing to see up, up it's close. it's, yeah, they, it's they still a very, have the horses by the way it is yeah it's it's a very interesting city for that reason it's what well, like the stay weird attitude which is their the motto here right mm -hmm. uh is i think a symptom of how goddamn wild it is when you get a bunch of young liberal people that still share a lot of the conservative values like gun ownership and, <laughs> and, and libertarian values like i want my drugs and i want you to fucking mind your own business and stuff like that it's a really interesting confluence of people here yeah. i think austin might be the most in my opinion American city. Oh yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah, it is definitely like 50, it represents everybody here, for here. sure. Yeah, a everybody's here and everybody's welcome. And uh, those guys, those cops are still on horseback. By yeah. the way, that yeah. never changed. But even policy yeah. wise, you know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah, yeah, Just how sure, you yeah. handle drinking, yep. how you handle socializing, how you handle football, how mm -hmm. you handle late life. Yeah. Like just you know, uh, in your businesses, you know, you you guys really go out of your way to support local business. Mm. When I was there, I was blown away by the names of businesses. It was like Ruby's Barbecue and Dan's Hardware. And it was yeah, yeah, yeah. Wild. Yeah. It was like there was no Home Depot. You know, there was no. No, it's, yeah, it's I mean, still it's, like that. I yeah, just watched the uh, Netflix doc last night on uh, an 85 year old grandmother who cooks barbecue. If you want to get high and watch that, it's a whole Netflix series. Wait, on she lives barbecue. here? Yes. Well, let's just find out where she lives and go to her house. I, well, I, I tried. So last night. Oh, I'll, I'll find What's her. What's the series? I'll um, find her. What's the, her goddamn uh, name? The series is called Chef's Table, and it's all, oh, bar yeah. it's all barbecue. So this, this season is all barbecue joints all over the U.S., and the one that was from Texas was an 85-year-old woman named Tootsie, and uh, she was a janitor. Um, and then her, her husband ended up dying. She, she opened up a barbecue shop. So she puts it, she uses her mop from, from being a janitor and puts the barbecue sauce on the ribs and everything else. <laughs> Hopefully it's clean, but you know, you never know, obviously. Um, but, uh, they've been selling out for years and years and years. Uh, and she's become like a, a celebrity here. She's 85 years old. Um, but wow. they had to shut down for COVID, but you're right. Like Tootsie Tomanets. And the name of the barbecue place is called Roses, by the way. Um, okay. And, I see that's uh, important. 
Yes. Well, yes. I just want to go. Write I just, that down, everybody. Roses. Roses. I just, so, I'm just going to go to her house, dude. Fuck all this. Yeah, right? Um, but uh, you're, you're right. Everything in Texas is still like that, where it's, it's kind of uh, one name. Uh, you know it. And then the other locals have their own favorite places, but it's also somebody else by one name where it's like, hey, man, yeah. go to that other place with one name. Yeah. It's great. This isn't a place where you come open up a bunch of chain restaurants. I mean, there are chain restaurants here, obviously, because you have to have them here. Yeah. But uh, I, don't, I, doubt, I doubt their market share is as high here as it is anywhere else in the country. It's probably way lower. Right. Yeah. Like people don't go to Ruth's Chris here. They go. To, it's Texas. Yeah. You can throw a fucking rock in any direction and hit. A fucking cow. Yeah, it's like going to an Olive Garden in Times Square. You're just not going to do that. It'll never happen. And it's yeah, that's what I love about this shit because uh, we meet with all these uh, restaurateurs, restauranteurs. I don't know how what the word is, restauranteurs and uh, bar owners and shit. And it's it's a they run the entire gamut of life experience, political beliefs, uh, like race and culture, all this stuff. It's very interesting to see that. Because you, when you think Texas barbecue, you think like, oh, it's some fucking dude with a big, big belt buckle, you know, over, standing over a smoker. But no, it's like some fucking uh, gay Asian hipster that's 22 years old that figured out some new recipe and now he's got a great fucking restaurant. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and we had, we had, we had, a, we've had a few of them on the show. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I love that shit. That's that, so like, I guess just back to your point, this might be the most American city that exists right Tell now, you, at least right I, now. I, I wasn't blowing smoke. I, when I, that was my assessment when I went there. I was like, wow, just from policies to mm. food to governance to interaction to even racial mix. I was like, this mm. is the most American city there is, Austin, Texas. Yeah, it's a blast. Are you So would you ever leave or no? Are you there for, for life, you think? <laughs> um, for L.A.? Mm-hmm. Um, you know... I mean, it's been weird. There a while. I'm gonna have a. There's gonna be something that speaks to me that tells me when it's time to leave LA. Right. But because I have an 11 year old daughter, she's very much here, going to mm. school, and um, you know, I just it, 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 there's something here that makes sense for me to be here still. And I really am a proud Angelino. Like I love my city. I love LA. You know, we just the Dodgers just won. The Lakers just won. We didn't get a parade. Wow, what an amazing phenomenon! And no parade for either. Um, I know, man. What's so? I, I saw today online that there was because we host a huge sports show as well. I saw online that they were going to do a virtual parade. Did you hear about this for the Lakers? I didn't hear anything about this. What, what, the, is, what does that, that mean? That would be interesting. I didn't either. And um, when I when I saw it, I was like, dude, is this where we're headed? Like, you work your entire career to win right? a championship, and now it's going to be online with. With people, I mean, look, I, I guess it's happened in the music industry and all that other stuff with Grammys and everything else this year. But uh, for that, man, damn, like, dude, especially L.A., because um, having lived there for so long, like, dude, people have waited since 88 for the Dodgers to yeah. win. And, and especially the last, was, what, fucking that one hurt. Eight, the I mean, last even eight Justin years Turner or so. got shamed for jumping out there with his COVID itself. And I love Justin, but I'm like, you know, I'm not even mad at him. I'm like, you earned this, man. Jump on that field. Just stay six feet away. Yeah. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Yeah. Same. Yeah. And then, and then the Lakers, man. They they should just get. They should have just hired Michael Bay to CGI the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> just make a movie called uh, L.A. Parade and fucking have you know just make fake parades and then Why not? show that on. Then TV. there's huge explosions in the background. Yeah. Every put everybody time. on green screen and have Bruce Willis come in with an RPG. And... Three hundred million dollar budget. Yes. Easily for the Lakers. Yeah. Uh, are you are you, obviously being from Los Angeles? Are you a diehard Lakers Dodgers fan? Definitely a Laker fan, even bigger Dodger fan. All right. Well, hey, let's. I want to put your feet to the fire then on LeBron James. Uh, <laughs> greatest of all time, yes or no? There's been a lot of debate about that recently. I am a diehard, diehard Kobe mm. guy. I still have Ooh. Jordan 1, Kobe 2, and I've got LeBron at 3. Where are you at not, in that? I'm not going to disagree with that order. Okay. Good, good. I'm not going to disagree with that order. I, I think... I, I kind of get annoyed by the ordering in general, though, only because the rules have changed so yeah, much yeah. in basketball. You know, they're allowing traveling now. You know, the, you can't hand check. There's, you know, the, the, you're scoring 200 points uh, in all star games. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, you know, I, I, I'm always going to give a special edge to guys like Magic and Mike and Bird um, because of the, 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 the sheer physicality that they had to endure every night. Right. And without modern technology, without all this private jet stuff, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, these dudes, these dudes were literally like smoking cigarettes at LAX waiting on their flight. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then, get, you know, they, you and it's like you had a fight with Bill Lane Beer. You, you know, it, it was a technical. It, you yeah. didn't even get thrown out of the game. Exactly. You lived yeah. to, fight, to fight to the second deck. Yeah. What's that guy? You know, what's, it, who's that guy from the Lakers that had the glasses? The coach Rambus. Rambus. Yeah, that, Rambus. Man, that dude. I just want to see him. 
fight people. I don't care what else he does in life. Dirty right? Curdy. Don't you yeah. remember that famous clothesline? Like yeah. when he yeah. got clothesline, that <laughs> famous clothesline, they're yeah. playing Boston. And it's yeah. just like, that's like a freaking hockey play, man. Yeah. I'm like, you know, this this modern generation can't even relate to that mm. level of physicality going through the Detroit bad boys to win mm. a championship. So, yeah. you know, I'm not saying that LeBron couldn't have done it. I mean, obviously he's a tank. Yeah, he but is. But the fact of the matter is, it's just that's not the era that he played in. Mm. And I'm always going to give an extra, you know, a bit of respect for the guys who did it in the short shorts. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, there's a, there's I a, agree, there's man. a. I think there's a pretty good argument to be made that LeBron James is the best athlete in American history. Yeah, that, I say athlete. Yeah. I, I could put him up top five greatest yeah, athlete. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, but then, sure. yeah, don't forget about a lot of other people out there. Jackie Robinsons and stuff like that who did yeah. this in multi multiple sports. A lot, a person, a lot of people like to forget and don't. You know, because he he got injured too soon was Bo Jackson. Yeah, Bo you know, Jackson. There was actually, Bo a time was where best. technically Bo Jackson was bigger than Michael Jordan. Yeah, Bo, yeah. I remember they both had buildings on the Nike campus. Yeah, and Bo was the Bo knows. He was Bo the knows. true sport yep. guy. Remember yeah. that? Yeah, he's. I mean, you got to put Bo Jackson there. You probably got to put from from this era. I would say uh, uh, LeBron James and probably Mike Trout. And but that's Mike that's up there. that's that's pretty much all I can think of from this era that would even qualify. But. Uh, uh, I mean, Jordan's got to be in there. His athletic ability, his mental toughness is why he won six championships. But his athletic ability, everybody forgets about that sometimes. Yeah. Go back and watch those games in the early 80s where he's jumping like fucking from the free throw line and dunking on people and shit. It's incredible to see how that guy can can. Phil can Jackson move. had a really great uh, de determinant between Kobe and Jordan. He mm. said Jordan had bigger hands and he was also physically stronger than Kobe. Mm. Um, and he was like, if I have to choose between the two players, I just understand the difference between somebody having bigger hands, being able to manipulate the ball. Right. And, uh, and then also I'm going to take the stronger man. Mm. And so that, you know, which is, I mean, look, you're not going to get a more up close uh, opinion than, um, than, uh, than, than Phil Jackson. Th you guys are going to laugh at me, but this is my life these days. Yes, mom. No, I can't hold mom. I'm on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We're leaving this all That's in, by COVID. the way. Yeah, we're leaving this in, Jaleel. You know that, right? <laughs> I, it happened to me as well. My my hand, my son stuck his hand under that? the door when I was calling? on the podcast. Who, I, I just need to, who, who, do, do they have to be spoken to right now or can they take a message and be called back? <laughs> You're embarrassing the living crap out of me, but it's okay. It's, been, it's kind of the theme for my life. I'm sorry, Miss Helen, trying to handle some of your other business. All right, bye, Mom. <laughs> So as you can see, Zoom school is not working out. No. Um, <laughs> I'm the same. I was on a podcast. My my son, my six year old son, stuck his hand underneath the door in the background of uh, of a shot and was wiggling his fingers and was live on you. It was live on YouTube and uh, everybody was like, "Hey man, you I think you should tell your wife to turn around." There was a man's hand underneath the door wiggling his fingers and I was like, I. We had to stop the show. I mean, we we left it in, obviously, but uh, we had to stop it. And uh, and he's just back there waving and like, dude, they have no idea. They, our kids have no idea. None. None. Um, but uh, back to the, the, the Kobe and Jordan. Oh, you know what? I was wrong, actually. Michael Phelps. You have to throw him in there, too. Yeah, Michael Phelps is great. Absolutely. Oh, from, the, from, from, this, from this general area. Yeah, yeah, era. yeah. 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 But uh, back to that, that Kobe and Jordan arguments. Even Kobe, one of his last interviews, had said, hey, man, I took everything from Michael. If there's no Michael, there's no me. So... He he still has Jordan. Yeah, as, that kind of that and rubs I, me the I wrong way with LeBron because he won't say that. Right, like he he gets butt hurt when people are like don't consider him the goat. Like just being in the conversation, Should consider enough, considering yeah. what what uh, Jaleel's talking about right now and the fact that there are different styles of play and blah blah blah, different eras, different rules. You, you're never going to be able to get a definitive answer. There's no metric for who's the greatest. Obviously, right? Yeah. I mean, there, there's a culmination of numbers that you can make arguments for and stuff like that. But ultimately, if you're in that conversation, that means at least in your generation, you're definitely the best, right? So that should probably be good enough. Yeah, I think. absolutely. Absolutely. You know, but, it, but it, again, we're also living in this era now where people put such an emphasis on relevance mm -hmm. instead of legacy. Yeah. And, uh, and so I think that I think maybe the reason why LeBron feels that way is just it's, it's a byproduct of the society that we live in today. Mm -hmm that continues to make these top five, top three lists over and over and yeah. over again every week. Yeah, thanks and, a lot, you know, it, it just It can become an annoyance after a while. Yeah, for sure. And it's, uh, you know, he's, man, I, I enjoy watching him play, to be honest. I do wonder how he would have looked in the 80s and 90s. Because Oh, yeah, I do, man. I really do. The thing that makes LeBron unique, though, is, um, you know, he, 
there are not too many people that can bother LeBron psychologically. And I felt yeah. like Kawhi really? was the only guy that could really get under his skin psychologically. Yep. So as soon as I even saw the Clippers go out, I already knew. I was like, oh, mm. Lakers are cruising. Yeah. Cruising we, we to a championship. Was it, uh, was it Steven Jackson that would blow in LeBron's ear and shit all the time? Was that him? No, it was Lance Stevenson. Oh, it was Lance Stevenson. That, was Lance That's Lance a, yeah. that shit's so goddamn funny, dude. It was the best. That's That to me, like we had Sean Avery, the hockey player. He was a, he was an L.A. King back in the day, if you yeah, like yeah. hockey. Uh, he was we, on the show yesterday. Yeah, we had him on yesterday, and he was, he's one of those guys, too. Like, they had to create rules to stop him from fucking with people. Like, there's, there's literal rules in the NHL now based on him fucking with the people. Avery, I love the that. The Avery rule, yeah. 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 It's so funny. I, I, Lance Stevenson is a funny guy. Yeah, he's one of the best. I, when you were talking about rele relevance and things lasting for a while, um, I, I think about your TV show, and I think why everybody still relates to you is Family Matters, man. Um, I feel like that was one of the greatest... Friday night shows for kids and families. And I think that's why that legacy has lasted so long, uh, to Appreciate be honest. It. Yeah, to be honest with you, man. And like, um, they just don't make enough shows like that anymore. Therefore, whenever it's on, people are still sitting down with their kids and rewatching it to this day. Well, you know, one of the issues that you have with programming these days is that everything is niche. So mm. it's not, you know, it, and there's no such thing as appointment television anymore. Unless it's sports right. or, or a some live you know, event, I, yeah. We were we were that we were that generation where we actually had to get home to see something at eight o'clock or mm -hmm. eight thirty because nobody could could program the VCR, right? That was that yeah. was the generation that I grew up. It's in. still blinking so twelve what, zero zero, what, like two right, years right? after yeah. the damn thing. You, yeah. you can program it, Dan. Don't tell me you can program it. <laughs> well, I I can, yeah, but it, like we never did. We never did. Exactly. Why, what's the point? If you left the house and you were going somewhere, you press record at like six, right? And then the tape was six hours. You knew your program was going to get recorded somewhere during there, but you had to fast forward all the way through it to get to it. Was get a pain to in it. the butt, man. It was, it, so it was a different era of life. Um, and, and also there was less distraction. You know, the internet wasn't quite the internet yet. You know, I, I still come from the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, I'm motive generation. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, um, with fewer distractions, people were able to congregate around the same things. And 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 now with, you know, I, I have the time, I don't even know what my daughter's looking at until I go look at her phone after she's gone to bed. And I'm like, okay, mm. wait a minute, what the heck is this? You yeah. know, it's 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 just everybody's on their own devices going in their own different directions mm. and you know, and and you know, so you don't have to make things for everybody anymore. Right. That's why it's fun when something gets made for everybody. I remember I went and took her to see Jumanji mm. uh, to the, the, the sequel. And it was like, even as a movie, I thought that was for everybody. It was great. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I enjoyed watching it as an adult. The kids were digging it. And, you know, very few things play on both levels for the adults and the kids anymore. Yeah, and I, and I think that's why they're remaking a lot of things, like a lot of shows yeah. over and over again. Well, they can't again, figure like out how to do it again. Full House and, and like, everything else, yeah. What would, it, what would you, I mean, obviously, this takes years of work and blah, 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 but like if you were trying to think of an original idea right now that would appeal to most people, that is a tall order. I can't think of anything. Yeah. And, and I wonder if the rise of independent media and niche media is uh, at least in some way responsible for how divisive everything is now because you're right sitting everybody gathering together on a certain night of the week to watch a certain event together there's a catharsis that happens there right everybody kind of unloads all of their bullshit and just kind of exists together in the same spot yeah and not nah, like, dan listen unless you're watching the grammys or like i say you're watching the sporting event mm -hmm. you're just not going to get that level of uh of of um family bonding you're mm. going to get resistance yeah. Literally, you're just going to get the kids or even an older person it's like i don't want to watch this this is too long what is this yeah. uh, you know and it's like right it, you just didn't even think that way like watching i mean i'm, I'm, I'm going to say a show that's been banned from the air but for me you know thursday nights watching the cosby show at eight o'clock was just such a staple in my life mm. it was so huge it was a staple in a lot of people's lives trying to negotiate with my mom to just stay up and watch a different world a half hour later, which is like, it was, it was a thing and mm. family ties. I'd be trying to sneak and keep my TV on and the sound down to watch my you know, Michael J. Fox. And yeah, you know, it was just a different time, man. Different yeah. Time. And they, I mean, they, they used to grind out hits too. I mean, shit, Cosby show two, two, seven, uh, oh man, I'm so proud of you as a white man for saying two two seven. You're welcome. I'm so that, proud of you, dog. You're Isn't welcome. That, uh, Florence something or other. What's her name? Uh, 
What was her name? Talking about the Jeffersons. Oh, no, I'm talking about Jeffersons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the Jeffersons. I, I it was Marlon Gibbs. Marlon Gibbs was in both. Mm. I grew up in Atlanta. So uh, my life, because TBS was still TBS back then, but it was a local station, not a, you know, global station. Right. And so the only things that would show over and over again um, were, like, dude, 227 would show over and over again. Oh, the shit. Jeffersons. Re Regina King was in that. I didn't realize she was that yeah. old. Yeah, dude. I forget about that. Regina King yeah, still uh, looks identical to this day. She too, looks like she hasn't aged a goddamn day. At all, dude. Holy shit. At hey. all. It's crazy. Um, Rich Black don't crack. I know. It really doesn't, dude. Uh, that's why you see all these white guys fucking tanning all the time. Like, that's yeah. the only way we can compete. Um, since you were famous, like, so, so, at so young, did you get to meet a lot of that young talent in the 90s that was back then? Um, I met everyone. Yeah, like I, I'm because like I'll Lakin used to show me pictures of like all the people she was with, and it yeah. altered my mind. And I was like, I, I met everyone. Shit, I met everyone. There's nobody I didn't meet. I met everybody. Who was who was who was the best? Yeah, yeah. I was I was just gonna ask you. Do you have a Mark Michael Kelly, Jackson story? Whatever. Met them all. I met Aaliyah on the sidewalk on the streets. Mm. You know, I was like, wow, he's really cute. You know, in my mind, I have no shot. I have no shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, she was standing next to her brother. She was awesome. He just like gazed at her. Um, cause you guys, was, you guys were the most famous people on the planet. That TGI Friday block dude at that time and Thursday night, that Thursday night and Friday night block. Yeah. I mean, you guys met everybody, like met everybody. I, I, I almost played one-on-one -on -one basketball with Tupac almost on my life. Cause he was shooting, uh, um, poetic justice, mm, um, great, on, uh, on our lot. And at that time, John Singleton was just like a hero to any black kid that even thought they wanted to be in film. And, yeah. John would invite me to the, uh, to the editing room sometime. That's when they were still cutting film. You know, they was, they were, everything wasn't, uh, wasn't digital. Um, and, um, I mean, you know, I just, there's nobody really, honestly, that I, that I didn't meet. Uh, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I remember Charlie Sheen uh, being at an opening of a planet Hollywood. And everybody was making such a fuss over my talking Mickey Mouse watch. And he took off his $50,000 Rolex and was like, here, let's switch. <laughs> no I think he'd be shit. drinking a lot that evening. Uh, right. I don't oh. think uh, Charlie drinks, actually. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Let me check the end. Oh, yep. Checking the internet. He definitely drinks <laughs> yep. and does a ton of cocaine. Did yeah. you keep the watch or did he take it back? You know, again, I didn't know what it I didn't know what it was. I he was being very serious at the time, but a friend of his came back, was like, Come on, man, I gotta get this watch back. Come on, I, I can't let I can't let Charlie do that. I was like, oh, all right. And then then somebody came up and told me it was like, you know, you always get you always get that nerdy materialistic person that's like, you know, that was a fifty thousand dollar Daytona. Mm -hmm. was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're like, dude, I don't, I have no idea. Uh, what was Michael Jackson like? Um, Michael was uh Michael was interesting. Um Michael was very, I always like to credit Michael as being the most self-aware um, entertainer of all time. He knew how famous he was. He knew how he affected people. He liked what he liked. Um, pretending to be a child every day was something that he did to escape reality, you know? Um, and so when I met him, I just felt like he was almost drawing me into a conversation that was beneath my age. I met him backstage at the NAACP Image Awards, where I, matter of fact, won one of those things, that thing right there. There it is. Show um, off. There it is. And um, he, was, um, he was summoning all of the, the, the winners to his dressing room. And even that, it's pretty self-aware when you think about it, you know, where it's like, oh, I'm not going to go to a party and mingle with people and hope that I run into somebody. Mm. Just have all the winners just come by and greet me. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> right? right? And uh, there were like two kids in there that were dressed exactly like him, his lovely mother, Catherine, and like a whole bunch of comic books and action figures on the table. And we just had this discussion about comic books. And I'm like, I don't even read comic books, but if he wants to talk about comic books, I'm not going to change the subject because this is Michael Jackson. Mm. Yeah, what it, it's got to be strange, right? How old were you at the time? Uh, I was probably about 14, probably about 14, somewhere 14 or 15. What else? So when you were talking about having younger conversations, like he was trying to, to treat you like a little kid and at 14, yeah. you, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and the thing I always, I, I, I kind of, I don't want to get in trouble by saying this, but it was like, Michael kind of like, you know, his interactions with kids was almost kind of like, it was almost kind of like dating. So it's like when he met a new kid that he, that was more, in, that he was more interested in, he kind of stepped off the old kid and, and started hanging out with the new kid. So forget about what you think took place. You know, that's your own personal opinion. But still, it's a little weird to have an adult take a liking to you 
and then all of a sudden they're just kind of off you. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. And, that, and, and, and I think he did that a lot. Um, and, um, that's an unusual way to interact with, with, with minors. It, you know yeah. So it was like, I, 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 I won't even lie. I was a little jealous because he gave me his phone number and, and he didn't call me back. Yeah, dude, that's the way I, that I, I had seen another guest on the show, and he said, "Dude, I, I'm upset. I wasn't touched by Michael Jackson. Was I not no, good no, looking I, enough?" He hung out with my co-star Brighton McClure all the time, mm. but again, Brighton, if you put a hat on him, looked like the spitting image of Michael Jackson at that age. So it was like, you know, I kind of felt some kind of way, like, well, am I am I too black and too tall, and am I too good at basketball? What? Why doesn't he want to <laughs> hang out with me? And uh, but. Uh, but he hung out. Brighton would come back every, you know, Monday on the set with these just awesome, you know, Neverland stories. And I'm like, damn, you know, I mean, technically this, this shit ain't going to be funny if I'm not funny on Friday night. But mm. I mean, could, could, could Mike maybe <laughs> hang out with me a little bit? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm I've had the conversation with Brighton, too. Where I was like, you know, I was jealous of you, man, hanging out with Michael Jackson all those years. So I'm very at peace with this. It's very it's a funny thing. You should have grown the uh, mullet like Brighton had back in the day. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, does yeah. it, man. That's what that's what does it. That, yeah, that's sick. Yeah, my hair, my hair texture doesn't do, it doesn't do that. It just doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't do that. It doesn't my do mullet, that. My, my bullet, but my bullet goes up and stands out and must be flattened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, man, over your career, I mean, you've gone on to do like, God damn it. Your credits are endless. I feel like, mm. um, uh, you know, my IMDb definitely goes long. <laughs> I, I'm looking at 96 here, but I remember you playing uh, uh, Martin Luther King in uh, Drunk History. How mm. was that working on Drunk yeah, History? Yeah, man, I love that. See, I love the obscure yeah. stuff that you find. Yeah. Um, Working with Derek Waters was great. He's created a show. Um, you know, I always got a chance to interact with somebody that was just really fun. Mm. Um, Retta from the show Good Girls. Mm. Um, you know, she was in an episode that I did. I worked with Raven Simone on an episode. Um, and and that, the episode you're talking about, I worked directly with Raven Simone. Um, it was it was just a different discipline. You know, it was like um, it was the uh, the lip syncing thing before the lip syncing thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, and so when I first got on set, I wasn't really ready for it. And what I would do eventually, I got smart about it quick, is I would put my lines on, I would record my lines and put them on my phone and uh, as little voice recordings. Mm. And then I just walk around with AirPods and then you would just, you would play them and then you would just mouth the words and you do it all day. Just mm. did it all day. That was oh, the wow. exercise. That's smart. Yeah. I was, I was wondering how they shot that. Um, yeah. Because I, I saw the original sketch when it was on Funny or Die. And then obviously yeah. it moved on to, to Comedy Central and had a yeah you shoot it you shoot it to playback mm -hmm. so they they actually they say action and they they hit the playback and you know you you lip sync a lot it's almost like a music video it's almost like shooting a music video then um, yeah yeah man that's crazy yeah. uh, that's crazy one of your credits here is Atlanta um, yeah I mean dude <laughs> that was funny that's a now, great show I didn't, I didn't know my my lovely manager um, he's uh, he he didn't know that. Uh, he thought that the real Justin Bieber was going to be in the episode. <laughs> well, here's Seriously, the thing. Did it, it Donald the, Glover tell him any differently? Because he, like, I heard he just does a bunch of weird shit like that. Yeah, it, it was like nobody understood the tone of the show. So my manager, he called me, Jalil, um, you're doing an episode of Atlanta, uh, Atlanta in Atlanta next, uh, in two weeks. And, uh, and your scenes are with Justin Bieber. I could tell you he was so proud of himself mm. that he got me scenes with Justin Bieber. And um, I'm like, all right. And then I got to the set and I saw that the, the, a piece of tape over one of the honey wagons and it said Jesse, Justin Bieber. And I was like, oh, hell no. And that ain't, <laughs> there's no way in the world that that is Justin Bieber's dressing room. And, uh, and then it was revealed to me in makeup and hair that Justin Bieber was actually a black kid from New York. So, uh, <laughs> so funny. So you didn't know the whole time. Yeah. So I didn't get I, didn't, I wasn't in on the inside joke that they had planned for us. And uh, uh, I think my manager actually accepted the job on the premise that I was actually going to be working with Justin Bieber. <laughs> wow. I, yeah, dude, I always wonder about him, man, because, look, Donald Glover's brilliant. That show is... Uh, oh, that first season is amazing. I, the Invisible mm. Car and, and the club stuff. and Oh, I mean, that first season is just fire, man. I mean, I'm, a, I'm happy I get it. got a chance to get my nose in there on, on any of that surreal. I know, man, because, I, look, I, I'm... Three and four is shot back to back, so those are coming out next year, which I'm okay. amped, I'm amped mm -hmm. about because he took a couple years off. Um, and, uh, and when you're rich, that's how you do it. You just take a couple years off. Well, it, when you're rich, did you see his, his tweet the other night about it too? 
What he say? He said, um, I can promise you this. The only show that is better than this fucking show that's coming out is The Sopranos. And it was a, <laughs> it was a bold statement to make. So he's amped about it. Um, but I always wondered what it was like working with him and if you knew the full story going in. Because some of that shit, when I watched it, I was like, man, I don't know if these people actually know. Um, what they're getting into or what he's telling them. Yeah, uh, no, I think I think Hero, that's his key director, his main director, and, mm -hmm. and, and Donald had a vision for the show that they kept very close to the vest. You know, they didn't really reveal it to anybody. I mean, I didn't even fully understand what I was in until it came out. And, um, you know, he's a very quiet guy, actually. Donald, you know, I said what's up to him on set a couple of times, but he's a quiet dude. And um, as a matter of fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer this. This is my, this is my manager. Oh, hey, yeah. Chris, how's it going? I'm actually on a podcast right now. <laughs> Tell Chris thanks for, for getting him to work with Justin Bieber. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, so I have to get off soon and then, and then click over? Uh, okay. All right. Tell them I'm going to come over right now. But literally, I answered you on the podcast. You're looking at me right now. This is, this is my mind. Live my on Drinking Chris. Bros. Live on Drinking Bros. And, uh, I will click on that. I will click on that. <laughs> Zoom so okay, goodbye. <laughs> So between my mother and my very lovely manager, <laughs> I've been interrupted twice. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, as far as Atlanta is concerned, you know, it was a great show to be associated with. Mm. I, I got a chance to play basketball. I was just supposed to be there for a celebrity basketball game. And, uh, and, and, and Justin Bieber was, you know, played by a black guy. It was, it was a funny scene. Yeah, yeah. I, look, I'm a huge uh, fan of that show as well as Children's Hospital. Um, what was Love the Children's Hospital. That oh. where I worked with the funniest man I've ever worked with on a stage. And that is Nick Offerman. Nick mm. Offerman is my comic in-person hero. That is Dan. That guy has a dry comedy that is just effing fire. That is real life yeah. Dan Holloway. Too. Yeah, that's so. he. His character on Parks and Rec is basically me in real life. Yeah, yeah. Stone cold, dry. Like yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna give you that, Dan, but you could play his son. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a. He, his beard is nice. Yeah, yeah, it's very it's nice. A, it's a real nice one. a super one. nice beer. Yeah. Yes, very, you guys are going to kill me, but I got to hop off because apparently I have another interview. No worries. Uh, hey, tell everybody where they can find your new podcast, man. Yes. Um, my, new, my, my new podcast is called Ever After. It's former child stars who are still working in the business, having mm -hmm. a very candid conversation about, um, about the, the reality of making the transition to adulthood in our business. Um, and uh, as a matter of fact, this week, we just had Danica McKellar on. Mm -hmm. So she talks about you know, all the people who called her Winnie Cooper and all yep. the people who called me her, and uh, and all of our adolescent tales in between were pretty cool. Uh, she's also a math genius, so check it out. Mm. Yeah, she's great. Uh, you're great, man. Yep. We appreciate you stopping by yeah, today. Yeah. And uh, yeah, dude, hit up Lakin. Uh, she'll do your show too, man. No, yeah. I certainly will. Are you kidding me? Especially now that I know she's directing the Goldbergs. I want to talk mm -hmm. to her about that specific transition, man. Yeah. People... I mean, especially talking about females in directing. I mean, that's a, that's a huge accomplishment for her. You so got to get Fred Savage sure on too, right? The soundbite of me saying "kick ass, Lakin." I appreciate yeah. I appreciate that for you. I'll, yeah. I'll text her after this show's over for sure. Yeah, man. you got to get uh, got to get for Fred sure. Savage on there too. He's the ultimate behind Absolutely. the scenes guy. That's the, I mean, that's that's the OG Kevin Arnold. But Dan, yeah. I want us to drink and I want us to have like thick bacon in in Austin and and continue to talk politics. <laughs> that's that's Absolutely. my that's. I, I, that's, I, I, I do like that every day. Our, I like the energy we got going. Oh yeah, dude, <laughs> we, we we love this shit. Like we, it's to be honest, it'd be hard to find people that are left, is center left, that will come on a show like this and just have a conversation because everything's yeah. so everything's so combative. But we can fucking call each other assholes and then get drunk afterwards. This is a miracle, yeah, goddamn yeah. it! I like, I just felt like even the banter that we had. It's just like that's really what I want for the country, man. Yeah. I want people to be able to understand that you can voice your opinion yeah. and you can you can say these things and you can still be tolerant and accepting yeah. of somebody else's differences man 100 yeah. you know yeah. that's why jordan peterson says we can either fight with our words or we can fight with our fists that's the choice there that we have in america right now and there i guarantee you, you, you don't have it either way playboy yeah. Play yes way. yeah <laughs> yes yes we'll play one-on-one -on -one. um i'm gonna dunk on you <laughs> I can't dunk, but we'll we'll figure out a way. We'll see. We'll see about that, Dan. I gotta come back and do y'all show again. Hit yeah, me up, man. For yeah, buddy. sure, we will. All Take right, thanks, care, man. buddy. Thanks. All Julia. right. Take care, guys. See you, dude. Uh, great guy. Yeah, great funny. guy, man. Um, and uh, dude, it's super entertaining mm. uh, as always. He's uh, smart. I've listened to a couple of his shows. I listened to. Uh, Let's see. The one with Haley Joel Osment mm -hmm. was really good because he he took a break. I guess. I mean, it wasn't really a break. He was just kind of in relative obscurity for a while, and came back with some big hits. Like Future Man was huge. Yes, that that show was. If you haven't seen that show, it is fucking hysterical. It's one of my favorite comedies. 
uh, comedy series, and and uh, he's done other stuff now as well. He's, yeah, he's writing and producing and things like that. So it's interesting to see how these people navigate through that bullshit because some folks just leave it all together. Like the weight of it becomes so much. It's like fuck this. I'm gonna go work at a bank. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, man. I I think the the most famous one for me is uh, probably Jake Ryan from uh, Sixteen Candles. Right. It, that movie in the 80s, like that was everybody's fucking dream dude. And then I, I think he only did that role and then just bounced and became like a farmer or a furniture builder in something uh, like in, in like Virginia or something. Mm -hmm. Nobody can find him. He doesn't do any of the reunion shows with Molly Ringwald or any of that stuff. And uh, uh, it's strange. Uh, it's interesting to see what you make of that. Um, mm -hmm. When you become famous, so famous. I mean, Molly Ringwald did the role. same, right? She yeah. Did, she just got married and had kids and fucked off. She was yeah, done and then she finally came back to acting now. Like, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Like, she's doing a bunch of stuff on, like, ABC Family and everything else. Uh, I'll never forget her turning down the, like, that's the most, one of the most famous stories of all time is she turned down the pretty woman role. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be her instead of Julia Roberts, which is. That was a, she, she made the right choice. You think so? Yeah. I mean, for America. Yes. Because yes, Julia Roberts in that role, you, you could not have done better than that. I agree. There's no way. I agree. Uh, we got some sponsors, Dan, who pay for the shit wagon mm. to be on the air. Uh, this is our Sunday night show tonight. Uh, we've been recording a few in advance. Um, we're not really sure how the COVID stitch is actually going to shake out. Mm. Seems like uh, some places are shutting down and um, fuck, man, I... We'll, we'll discuss it, uh, you know, on the sports show, obviously, but um, some places are shutting down. Some cities are shutting down yeah. right now. So uh, we're trying to stack episodes in advance in case anything happens here in Austin, Texas. So uh, forgive us. But uh, our first one, obviously, is ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, one of the finest in the land. Um, Georgia, if you want to pop up the logos now, you can. Feel free. Feel free. All right. All right, look, we're on the fly here. Recording in advance, you know? Uh, Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. As always, 30% uh, off. If you remember the military, a first responder, a teacher, or work in the government in this life. Uh, otherwise, if you're just a regular dummy, uh, you get 25% off and two free pillows when you get a mattress. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and get yourself a mattress. Uh, they get a 36 month page you go program, no interest there at ghostbed.com. Dot com. Next up, we get expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. Protect your digital butthole. Uh, this is the only time in this life, Dan. Are, are you reordering uh, ExpressVPN right now? Am I reordering it? Yeah, dude. I'm looking at the, uh, I'm looking at the new copy. Uh, for for, for expressvpn.com? Yeah, the social dilemma copy. It's Look, good. Look, man, I, I, I want to hear your version of it with the, with the social dilemma thing. Like, uh, for me personally, everybody who's ordered expressvpn.com for slash drinking bros is always talking about the programming they're stealing from other countries. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's part of it, but I think... Uh, I get it all the time. I get those emails all and, the time. And this one, it's not necessarily about that. It's more about... If you, you've watched the social dilemma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Netflix, yeah. I mean... Right. It, it's gotten out of control. Maybe it was always out of control, the way these companies are able to collect and then leverage our data mm -hmm. afterwards. And this big Spotify deal that just happened, it's all about data, right? Yes, it has, uh, no, it has nothing to do with uh, podcasts themselves. It is yeah, literally no. stealing the data of who not is listening not at all. So, to the podcast. You know, just for your personal safety these days, uh, you don't have to be... The thing, the thing about crime is you don't have to be faster than the bear you just have to be faster than the other guy running next to you you know what i mean right so that's why people frequently buy stickers that say they have an alarm system when they really don't or even having a dog in the home like for physical security for digital security you're not going to get anything better than express vpn because for, for a number of different reasons one it masks all your private shit on the internet mm -hmm. two it is uh, uh multi-platform right so you can use it on pretty much any device that you have that has any kind of uh, any, any kind of connection to the internet. It pretty iPhone, much works on everything. Yeah, yeah. laptop, all so, this stuff. I mean, you got now's the time, man, to to start paying attention to this shit. Actually, the time was years ago, but now. now you definitely have to because the way things are going politically these days, it just seems like these two parties are at each other's throats one day after another. Somebody's doing this, somebody's doing this, and it's only a matter. The crazier it gets, it's only a matter of time before one of these assholes tries to use your data against you. Correct. Right. Correct. So, 
expressvpn.com slash drink it bros correct uh it is seven dollars a month if you sign up for a year you get three months for free uh, we've had it forever it just it runs seamlessly in the background of all your electronic devices it is necessary at this point uh next up we got buy raycon.com forward slash drinking bros finest headphones in the land uh we're talking to sean avery about these headphones um, he loves these goddamn things. I was listening to his new show, dude. Um, yeah, it's good. It, 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 not only is it great, but um, he's funny as shit. He, dude, he talks about his running with the Raycons in. It's hilarious, man. Um, look, the best base there is, uh, they're durable, they're long-lasting, they recharge in a little tiny box, so you're good to go. Uh, and it lasts up to six hours um, of wireless. So yeah. uh, right now, if you're trying to buy some wireless headphones, man, good luck. They're expensive as shit. Not at, at, uh, at buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, you get 15% off with that personalized U- URL and uh, knocks them down to about 65 bucks and, and they last forever. Great sounds. Go to buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros today and get you some headphones. Last but not least, I'm wearing this watch everywhere. Mm. Uh, vincerowatches.com that's v-i-n-c-e-r-o watches.com um man they're i i think they're only running with us for for the christmas right uh yeah i mean that's the time of year when they they do most of their advertising but these watches are fucking dope man dope i look i've been wearing it every day and i this one in particular this rubberized band man um obviously yeah it's like vulcanized rubber but they also like come off so there's this little pin right here Uh on the bands and you just do like this yep and i mean it's the easiest thing of all time to get these things on and off. You can get whatever watch face you want, mm-hmm. and then you can buy different bands for it. You can buy different sets and stuff. I mean, it's, these watches are great, and it's also pretty affordable. I mean, if you're thinking about going out and buying a nice watch that you're going to wear in a suit or out at a nice dinner or wedding, I, so I coach, whatever it is. I coach my son's soccer team. Right. Um, obviously, Blue, Blue Dragons, Team of Destiny, God's Children. Um, I'm recording, we're recording this in advance. I'm coaching the championship this weekend. So I've been wearing this all throughout. I'm going to go ahead and say we've already won the championship. How about that? Uh, you'll know next week if I bring the trophy in, obviously. But I'm going to say we won the championship. So you're going to bring your child's trophy in to well, our show. I get, a, I get a coach's trophy. So, yes, I will bring the coach's trophy in. Uh, I will bring my child's in as well because I have a feeling they're going to be a uh, different size. Fake Dan is shaking his head behind camera. What's what's the story there, Fake Dan? You don't think is it is? It, well, I had. Two, what do you mean, twenty eight three? Is that what you're referencing? Best, two of my best players were out last week. Yes. Mm. Oh, you didn't. Hear? No, I didn't hear about that. <laughs> Let's finish this ad read, and then we can we can well, talk no, about your here, shame. Here's why this is important, right? So. I, I've worn this watch all season. This has been my good luck watch. I mm. refuse to take it off. And this is how I, because the, the kids play in quarters, not halves, because they're so young. So I time the quarters on this watch. <laughs> and I've worn it the entire year. I'm not taking it off now. Um, uh, the VinceraWatches.com has, has brought, brought me to this point of a championship. I'm on, a, on the brink of it. I'm three nights before. Um, again, Blue Dragons. God's children, everything. This could be the championship watch, is what I'm saying. Well, they do have a pretty dope blue face watch. Yeah, this is what it is. I've got the blue face watch on. There so, it is. Uh, Vincero, all I'm saying is this. If, if I win the championship this weekend, like I should. You think they should give you a free watch? I think, not a free watch, because I don't, I don't like to ask for free shit. What, I, what I'm thinking, though, is that maybe me and my son do the ad campaign and magazines and stuff like that for the watches and then just call it Vincero watches, the watches of champions. Um, so, you know, your call. It's not a bad idea. Your call. Uh, go to Vincero watches.com today and, uh, use the promo code drinking bros. Is it 15% off now? Um, um, yeah. Yes. Uh, 15% off at Vincero watches.com. This has been my good luck charm this year. So I'm going to give them a little extra love today because I've been wearing this shit for, uh, the entire season, and I feel confident about it. Uh, D'Anthony, there, with, with Jaleel, um, mm-hmm. and we were talking about uh, you know, favorite actors of ours. Um, By the way, it's free shipping as well. Is it really? 15% off of free shipping. Shit. Yeah. I forgot. Sorry, I forgot about that. Watches.com. Sorry, but I'm drinking bros. Free shipping on that. Yeah. Um, was there somebody growing up that, that was one of your favorites that you were like, hey, man, uh, I wonder what happened to them or what, what went on with them. Uh, not really, no. I mean, I wasn't 
I, I wasn't a huge TV person. Oh, really? You know I, man, I, mean? I was, dude. Like, I watched sports on TV, and, mm-hmm. I, and I played video games, but I played baseball a lot. Like, I, to be honest, the majority of my childhood, I was either working at my dad's auto body shop or playing baseball. Yes. Uh, things like being outdoors and stuff. And I, I really enjoyed playing video games as well, but TV and stuff, I mean, it was okay. It was, for, for me, it was, um, I was watching, like, uh, uh, science documentaries and shit. Okay. You know what I mean? So I don't, you don't really, I guess Carl Sagan, but I know what happened to him. He died. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's not like, it's not like there were TV characters that I was, like, really uh, uh, in love with, I guess, as people do, right? Like, you, you watch the same, it, it feels like, it's why independent media, like, podcasts are so popular. You feel like you're part of the group. You're just hanging out, talking. You know what right. I mean? So I think people, that, that was a deep relationship people had with characters on tv in the 80s and 90s i don't think it exists anymore no and i look the crazy part about it to me is um but i did love family matters same man for, look those thursday night and friday night yeah. programming dude you did not miss those every single week yeah. and it is so different now and what he was talking about like man he was he was correct it's like dude you really did sit with your entire family watch these shows and then you know you you went to bed and all all that other stuff like dude I because I played sports all through growing up I played mm-hmm. everything you could possibly play usually get home around six thirty seven um, have dinner and then we would sit from like eight to ten and watch this you know program like these this four hour or t- I'm sorry two hour uh, four you know four half hour shows of of programming and it was all comedies on Thursday and Friday night and we don't have that anymore uh, now it's like on these weird streaming devices and all this other shit. And like for me, you know, having a a six year old at this point, um, besides like the the game shows they put on, like Mm. Holy Moly or things like that, like there really isn't that thing that we sit and watch. Well, I mean, they're they're on YouTube, so they're watching. They are, yes. They're they're just watching. They're binge watching all the time. Yeah. Um, which is interesting because maybe they're they're just developing like personal relationships with these uh if you want to call them actors or at least perform we'll call them performers that we wouldn't have had the opportunity to back then Mm -hmm. but it's more of a one-on-one individual kind of thing and it's less like uh, julie was talking about earlier less of the family sitting around the tv at a certain time and day watching the same shit you know what i mean yeah but it is i mean it's i don't think it's completely fractured because anytime any of these big media events happen like the last season of Game of Thrones or Game of Thrones in general. Mm-hmm. After the first season, the hype on that show was so big. People, there were like people were getting banned and and unfriended and blocked and shit for leaking stuff, right? Because people were so serious about it. Uh, and I, so I think it's still there to some degree, but in mass, like there's no there's no Thursday night CBS lineup where you're watching three or four shows right in a row no. with your family. That doesn't exist anymore. I don't know if it's because it's too difficult, like Julia was saying, to find something that everybody kind of agrees on or enjoys since everything's so niche that in general, much less having three or four in a row on the same network. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But that seems there, there's, there's still, we're, we're always a lot more, we always have a lot more in common than we have, you know, the differences. Sure. Uh, it, it's, I, I, I don't understand why we haven't been able to figure that part out, to be honest. Like what? What would you think would be something other than sports or some kind of live TV event that most people would want to watch right now? You know what I mean? Well, I, as I was thinking about it last night, because we knew, obviously, Jaleel was coming on the yeah. show. And, um, you know, the guests are typically booked a few days in advance. So you have a heads up of it. Um, I, I, because I watch so much sports for, you know, our show and right. everything like that, like, I will try to watch things with my wife, right? Mm-hmm. So The Bachelorette is on um, I know all the ladies get together and watch that mm. typically. And uh, uh, Mandy came over last night and she was watching it um, uh, with uh, Jesse, you know. Mm. And I, I popped down to, to watch it live and get the, the live reaction of how crazy it was and all this other stuff. And uh, I was like, man, for women, this is like our, their sports where this shit is happening once a week. Mm. You can't binge watch it. And everybody wants to comment on the same thing because it, it gets out so fast on social media that yep. you you know the answers and everything else but um yeah for dudes it's it's more sports um HBO right now is still one of the very few uh networks that is doing weekly releases like that mm-hmm. um I, I i would say this in the last year 
besides Atlanta, because I'm a gigantic Atlanta fan, yeah, same. we talked about earlier. But uh, that little Dicky show, yeah, was the, Dave is great. Dave, yeah, was the one that I set my watch to, and I was like, all right, when is this coming on live? Great, I'm gonna watch this yeah. live. It was on Thursday nights and and all that stuff. But before that, I was like, ah, shit, mm, Yellowstone too. Yeah, I think that's yes, a big yes, one. Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm actually surprised when I hear somebody say they don't like or watch yellow i mean Brittany and i all, all, all the time we're like hey you know we should just go watch we, we should just not do anything this weekend is watch this whole goddamn series again yeah because it's so good yeah uh but she's got ptsd because she's worried that beth dutton is dead uh, right dude, I, we're not going to give away the ending but uh, well there's yeah. no we don't know yet until know. season three or yeah until season three comes out season four whatever it is comes out we won't know the way that that was set up in season three it could it could have been everybody died yeah we we have no, no idea, idea who's alive or dead, which is a very Dallas move on their part. <laughs> like Yellowstone is basically a very it's a it's a more realistic version of Dallas. You know what I mean? Correct. Like yes. I, it really is, and it's uh, one of the best shows on TV. But again, you don't have to. You can just get the Paramount app or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. And or watch it on Amazon Prime. I don't have to be somewhere at a certain time to well, see. It. I can watch I will, it whenever, I will wherever say I want. This. I tried. Um, to uh, the one thing the Paramount app did though was they held back the new episodes for, for a like, day. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And so you were s fucking screwed. So you I just got to like, great. You, you got to fucking ignore the internet for a day. Basically. I had to go into the DVR and then record it mm. if I was going to leave or whatever. And uh, yeah, that that was one of them. But man, that you're talking about a handful. Like, dude, that it was no lie with the VCR tape where you just put in yeah. the six hour tape, let it record, mm. and then come back and watch it. I used to do that all the time for Saturday Night Live. Mm. Because I was a big uh, SNL guy, obviously, yeah. and um, yeah, man. Then you got to fast forward for two hours, find the show, yeah. and then. Uh, well, it is what it is. I mean, I feel like you you probably touched on something that's that's correct earlier when you said that's why they're remaking all these movies because you're trying to you're trying to make something that you already know appeals to one of the groups. Mm -hmm. You want to make that thing appeal to the other group as well, right? right. So I don't know if it's working. Honestly, I don't know anybody that watches Fuller House. Uh, my kids do. So like, you know, when that came out, but they didn't know what. The, I don't know any they, adults that watch it. Correct. Right? But they didn't know what the real one was. So like, <laughs> that's that's a strange thing. Um, yeah. I just saw the trailer for uh, the new Saved by the Bell, which. I, I didn't know that was happening. I, I didn't either. And it. Who's in it? All of the original people and then a new cast of kids. Right. And it sounded like an absolute disaster nightmare that I was like, please don't do this. Uh, but then <laughs> I don't it, know. I don't get it. What are they? What's the the trailer drops? So they're dude. They're going back to the the, the they're adults. I think uh, Elizabeth Berkeley is a teacher. I believe they're all teachers at the high school or something like that. That seems like the premise. Um, and then they've got a new crop of kids. Mm. But when I when the trailer dropped, because I was the, I was getting ready to, to just be like, fuck you guys. This is the first thing yeah. I'm going to scream at. Um, it was written. It's written by the people of Thirty Rock. Mm. So it was really fucking good that trailer. I was Interesting, like, yeah, and it was really funny and self-aware. Dustin Diamond's not going to be on it. No, and well, he's got I, his own problems. Yeah, and well, so does uh, Voorhees. Yeah, Clark, Lark Voorhees. Lark Voorhees. She's wild as fuck too. So I don't well, think that's gonna. Lark is going through the Sammy Sosa phase of her life, mm. where she is whitening her skin. If you saw her, she looks like Giorgio, and it would. Uh, they're about the same skin tone. Well, speaking of. Of that, uh, Dustin Diamond now went to prison. Uh, he stabbed somebody. Oh, did he really? And then he did pornography. Well, I knew that he did porn. I didn't know he had stabbed somebody. You know who his brother is, right? Uh, Diamond Dallas Page. No, the wrestler. No, even uh, better, actually. Uh, no, I don't. Michael Diamond. I don't know who that is. Beastie Boys. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. <laughs> Mike, Mike D. D is his brother. Isn't that crazy, man? I, I honestly had Mike no idea. D and you're one of the coolest groups of all time, and your brother's fucking screech. You know? Well. Um, what are you gonna do? Yeah, but he did porn. Look, look, uh, he dabbled in porn for a while, and then um, you know ended up stabbing somebody and went to jail for I want to say like two years. Well, Britney Spears lost her conservatorship battle this week too. Hashtag free Britney, dude. Yeah. I knew she would. I, I follow her Instagram because I think she's the first celebrity to die. Man, she's um, that, go that, follow her her, that, her Instagram. Dude. That it poor her woman. It, it makes you. I know. I've seen it. Yeah. it I, I I can't follow it because it would just be too depressing. But uh, <laughs> it is. Uh, it is fucked. Yeah. I mean, it's bad. There, there's a reason she lost her conservatorship. I will yeah. say that. So. Oh, I guess. Uh, Lark Voorhees is going to be on an episode. Is she really good? Good for her. The only person because I don't I don't know 
what happened to her necessarily rather than the skin bleaching, but you know, I, who knows? Who knows? I don't want to pass judgment on the series will center around a new group of Bayside high students from quote unquote, overprivileged and working class families among the latter of which were transferred to the school as part of a plan by now California governor, Zach Morris. (laughs) <laughs> whose administration experiences controversy for closing too many low-income high schools to send. So the entire premise of the show is to put uh, wealthy white people with uh, poor black people, and then that, this is going to be terrible. No, I'm t- watch the trailer, man. It is written by the writers of 30 Rock, and they're, it, is, it was really funny. If they, let them, if they let them write it, then it will do well. But will they let them write it? Because the writers at 30 Rock, I mean, as, as liberal and crazy as some of these people are, mm-hmm. they wrote like super fucking edgy shit. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like they did blackface twice on that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and they did whiteface, but he had a monster claw because he ran out of white paint. Obviously. So, I Obviously. mean, what, what else are you going to do? But yeah, they, they've taken a lot of risk over there. Made a lot of fucked up jokes uh, from race stuff, rape drugs, yep. uh, whatever the fuck, terrorism. I mean, they've done all kinds of wild shit. I don't think they're going to be able to get away with any of this. We will find out. What I will say is this. It is on streaming, so they don't have to worry about advertisers at least because uh, mm. NBC is, is going streaming. As are all these networks, they're going to be called the Peacock. Mm. So you'll be able to get the yeah, Peacock yeah. app. I think you can already. But um, uh, one of the things was they cast older kids to play mm. high schoolers, which is always my favorite. Um, that will never, ever get old to me. Like 25-year-olds in high school? It's great, dude. That's yeah, the way hilarious. it should be. Um, so th- this is interesting. Um, that Zach Morris is the governor of California. Yeah. A.C. Slater, he's a gem teacher. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? A.C. Slater looks the same, though. He does, yeah. He could, he could still play himself, I think. I know. Uh, and they all have kids. Like Elizabeth Berkeley has one of her kids is at the school. Uh, uh, one of uh, Zach Morris's kids. It, it could be good, but I mean, I, I just watch don't, the trailer. That's I don't trust. I, I can't. I don't trust comedies, man. That's all. I'll say. I don't. I don't trust comedies to be comedy anymore. No, I, I, I'll. I'm all curious to see if they remake uh, Family Matters, we'll especially with all like all these new shows that are coming out, like that fucking Austin Fire or whatever the fuck that is. That bullshit with Rob Lowe. All it's just like and, oh the nine one one show. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah. same thing where uh, where Homeboy is the sheriff's deputy in L.A. Or yeah. he's the he's the sheriff in L.A. <laughs> it's just fucking nonsense, dude. They they do everything they can to wedge divisive issues in uh-huh. and try to make some moral conclusion every time. Like this isn't that's not entertaining to anybody. No, like being preachy, like uh, writing from the pulpit like that is it, it, it puts a at least a bad taste in people's mouth, regardless of how they feel about something. People don't need to be told over and over by some asshole. How to think and feel. I agree. You know I mean? And I, it's, I, I assume this, this show will go that way. Probably. Yeah, well, right. we'll find out. We'll find out. I'm, I'm curious to see. The one thing that I, I would like to fight for at home is they are shooting a TV show in Austin, Texas. I would like to get Dan Holloway on this TV show. Um, oh, boy. What's, what's the show? In Austin, Texas. It's another remake. It's another reboot. It is. Are you ready for it? Walker, Texas Ranger. Oh, really? Is uh, coming back. It's uh, who's one playing the, him? One of the dudes from Supernatural, Jared Pata, Padalecki. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe he's playing Walker, Texas Ranger. But I'd like to see you in that as a bad guy. I think that'd be great. Um, so just be myself is what you're saying. Yes, yes. So I we, we we when they are shooting, I would like to have a, a hashtag uh, get Dan Holloway on Walker, Texas Ranger, and uh, and see you there. Well, that dude lives here, doesn't he? Don't doesn't Both he, of them, he yeah. and his brother live like up near Lakeway or some shit like yeah, that? I think or yeah. somewhere he lives up there, and he's got. A, I know he's got a bar downtown. Yeah, um, but I, I don't know the name of it. And then uh, his co-star Jensen, uh, who's my homie back in the day, uh, he lives here as well, and they've got a brewery up uh, kind of in the Dripping Springs mm. area called Family Family Brewery. Says, um, but he's shooting a show in fucking Vancouver. Both of those mm. guys, man. It's like, dude, after fifteen years of one hour drama, you want to go shoot more TV? It's, cr- it's crazy to me. Crazy to me. Uh, look, thanks for uh, tuning into the show. Um, we're going to see what happens with all this COVID shit. Uh, obviously, we will be here, try to be here with you every single day. Mm. Um, I don't know what happens if they shut down Austin or if they are talking about that. Most of the cities are. I doubt they will with Austin, right? We are essential, yes, as podcasts. So, uh, well, I mean, look, if, it, if is that it, what they said? 
Okay. Maybe, but well, what it what it means is that it's going to court very soon because there's already been a ruling in federal court in Pennsylvania that you can't just shut down people's businesses and shit. Right. So that'll if as soon as phase three happens, if it happens again, there will be a litany of federal uh, uh, lawsuits yes. that happen really quickly, and then somebody will try to jump in. It might be uh, it might be the Justice Department. It may be somebody else that tries to jump in and, and consolidate all that to turn it into one complaint, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so they can field it, or the Supreme Court will look over all the complaints and decide which one to take and which one not to. You know what I mean? They just pick the one that they feel has the best standing usually and might be the most pervasive if they do decide on one thing or another. But, I mean, the federal courts have ruled already, and so has the state Supreme Court in, in, in uh, Michigan. Right. Uh, you, you can't shut people's businesses down, man. I mean, you, yeah, can, you, and can, you can require masks and all this other shit, but you can't do that. The one thing to watch for here is uh, when, when Biden gets in um, is the mandatory mask thing for the nation. Uh, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure how you enforce that you know, legally um, with the Supreme Court and everything, but uh, that's the one thing that I'm, I'm curious to see as to what happens. Um, but, you know, uh, Dan and I will try to be with you every single day. Podcasts have been deemed essential, so we should be able to keep going every single day. Um, you know, obviously we're worried about Giorgio uh, getting COVID from, from a Tinder or Grinder date, but um, nothing we can do about that, right? We're not going to stop him from getting his dick sucked mm-hmm. on the reg. Like, that's just not a thing in this life. Never. Never. Uh, you'll beat it, dude, by the way. Um, you're weaker than me, but yeah, maybe. Maybe. Um, I, everybody in North Carolina had to have had it when I came back, I would imagine. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, <laughs> either way. Yeah, Fake Dan, have you had it? Oh, okay, shit. AIDS. Shit, AIDS. Yeah. AIDS. AIDS. By the way, uh, there's only one law in the federal books that could even be leveraged to make people wear masks. And just for you guys out there, so you know in advance, uh, the biggest provision of that law is that there's a religious exemption. So we'll just start a new religion that prohibits masks. And uh, I like it. You can suck my dick. Yeah. Um, I remember as a kid, uh, somebody approaching me with a rattlesnake wrapped around their wrist. Mm. And it was from the Seventh Day Adventist. Mm-hmm. So, yes, after I met that human in my life, I can say you, you can make up any religion you want with snakes mm. and they, they, they have healing power. Well, they do. Let's do this. Let's do it. Uh, for D'Anthony and Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Go to iTunes, rate the show a five star, and leave a quick review. It'll help move us on up the charts. And subscribe to Drinking Bros Podcast on YouTube. Good night, everyone.